Good evening, everyone. Come on, good evening. Can we just bless the Lord on this good Friday afternoon? What a blessed day it is. Amen? Are we just glad to come into the house of the Lord on tonight? Amen. We could have been out trying to find dresses and suits, but we are in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I can give him glory on tonight. So he has just kept us through this day. He has kept us another good Friday. Well, in just a couple years, we couldn't even come into the house. We were on quarantine, but on this day, we are able to come and gather together. So for that, I give him praise on today. So he is a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my best friend um, hit a transfer truck last night, ran in the, in the back of it, underneath it. But I'm telling you, God kept her. She got a broke wrist, but we give God glory. He still got angels out there watching over us and protecting us and purifying the air that we breathe. For he is a mighty God. Because there's some things still out there. But God is still covering us underneath the blood. And because of the blood that was shed, I give him glory tonight. Because of the blood that was shed, I'm able to stand here in my right mind. Because of the blood. Hallelujah, God. We just glorify you for the blood on tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We're going to go in prayer, but just, just let yourself go on this good Friday. Just think, think back to when Jesus was just there, just hanging on that cross for us. He was being beaten and bruised for us, being pierced in the side for us. But I'm thankful that he got up. And because he got up, hallelujah, we can celebrate on today. I tell you, that one and working power. Hallelujah, God. Oh, dear precious Heavenly Father, oh God. God, we just glorify your name on tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, for just allowing us to come and assemble together on tonight, oh God. God, we come praising you tonight, Lord, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you got up for us, oh God. God, that you are high and lifted up, oh God. And God, for that, God, we give you praises on tonight, oh God. God, we give you a heart of worship on tonight, oh God. Lord, we just come and dropping off everything right now, God. And everything that's not of you tonight, oh God. God, everything that's just trying to weigh us down, God. God, we just ask for the fresh wind of God, the ruach of God, to breathe it on us tonight, oh God. God, let the wind blow in the house on tonight, Father God. God, we just bless your name tonight, oh God. Now, God, I ask God to just touch our bishop on tonight, oh God. God, as he gets ready to bring the word to feed us on tonight, oh God. God, fill him up until he wants no more, oh God. God, let his cup run him over, oh God. And God, touch everybody that's in this place, oh God. Because they were supposed to be here on tonight, oh God. So God, I have to activate the anointing in the house, oh God. The anointing that makes preaching easy, oh God. The anointing that makes singing easy, oh God. The anointing that makes teaching easy, oh God. Just have your way tonight, oh God. Now God, we have to purify the air that we breathe, oh God. And we plead the blood of Jesus in Psalm 91, oh God. God, that nothing can come nigh our dwelling on tonight, oh God. But God, we will glorify you tonight, oh God. Let our praises, hallelujah, God. Hey, yes, oh God. Let our praises, oh God, go up, oh God. Let them be pleasing to you, oh God. That wasn't pleasing, God. We ask your forgiveness right now, oh God. God, just search us through and through, oh God, so that we can be holy and acceptable unto you on tonight, oh God. God, that the sacrifices that we give on tonight, oh God. God, that you will be pleased, hallelujah, God. So, God, now we declare victory in this house, oh God. We declare victory in this place, oh God. And the enemy has to move in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hey, 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 hey,
head for me, he died. And you just think about that. He hung his head for you, he died. Come on, that's the worship and the praise right there. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Come on, give God a praise right now. We thank you for dying for us, oh God. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. He was thinking about you when he was hanging on the cross. Come on. He was thinking about you when he was hanging on the cross. Hallelujah. He was thinking about your sins, and he wanted to give you a chance. Come on, let's just worship God in that moment. Come on, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, 
thousand fold, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you bless each and every hand that gave, oh God. Lord, continue to increase them, oh God. Lord, bless the ones who didn't have to give, oh God. God, we pray, oh God, even more prosperity in front of, oh God, that they'll be able to give on the next time, oh God. And we thank you for what you're doing, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for this good ground, oh God. God, that will produce much fruit, oh God. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Find out he's an awesome guy. Yeah. He'll be with you when nobody else is with you. You be in the room all by yourself. All you have to do is say, Come on, Jesus. Come on through, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, I don't even need nobody, just me and Jesus. I said, What you doing? Me and Jesus have a good time. Jesus all in this place. He was all upon you. Jesus was all upon you. 
Amen. And I'm thankful that he was because can't nobody, amen, do me like Jesus. Amen. So I'm thankful for the praise team, these musicians, Lord of Baptist God. Give God a praise. Amen. For help. Amen. We thank God for our worship leader. She had to step out and handle business at the shop. Amen. But we give God praise for her doing what she can while she was doing. Amen. Amen. And certainly I thank God for all the ministers that are in the house. Amen. Those that are here. Amen. Let me see Evangelist uh, Wilson in the house. Amen. But we realize that she's at home. She's at home. Amen. One of my favorite people. Amen. And we talk about Jesus. We're in the hallway. And wherever we at, we talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God for her consistency of being who she is. Amen. Give God praise for her. Amen. Thank God for uh, Minister Margaret in the house. Amen. Amen. Her old pal was Amen. Amen. I felt her in the spirit. I was like, Lord, give her a word for the house. Amen. I said, Ow, I felt something. Amen. But I thank God. Thank God for her. Amen. Thank God for the deacons in the house. Amen. And the deacons in the house. Amen. Give her a word to see him. Amen. See Deacon the Sue. She had to go back and handle some business and she made it back. Amen. So we thank God for her and we thank God for Deacon Sheila. Amen. And everybody in respect the place. Lord knows I'm so excited to see Sister Kanika in the back. Amen. Amen. Don't you just love Kanika? Well, you think Kanika, you just get excited. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God for her. Amen. I think I'm thankful for my brother here. Amen. It's good to see you. Amen. My house is here. Coming back. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I thank God for the young brother by Sister Sheena. I think that's her nephew. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody in the house. Amen. Amen. Everybody in the house. Those that are online, it's good to see you as well. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Go ahead and share this because the word's about to come. And somebody need this word tonight. This word tonight is special. And somebody needs it. So you just go ahead and share um, this worship experience. If we can get I, my goal tonight is that we can get 10 shares. If we can get 10 shares, I think we can go far tonight. Right. Amen. I was looking at um, some of our data, and I seen that we have been going as far as, as Kansas. I was like, who in Kansas? Look at us. Amen. But the good thing is, is that with technology, um, that God allows us to get to places that our feet may never trod. Amen. So we want to continue. So please, those that are online and even those that are in the house, amen, when you get to your phone, if you have it in your hand, house somewhere close, share now or share later. But we want to get at least 10 shares, amen, to be able to get uh, this word to uh, the places it need to go. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. We want to go ahead and prepare ourselves for uh, for the word. Amen. I do want to let you know that um, sometimes, and sometimes in the course of things. Uh, things don't always go the way you want it to. Amen. I was just giving technology some praise, but technology also got on my nerves earlier. Amen. So I apologize that I will not you will not have the slides tonight. Amen. Those online you will have uh, you will have a you will have a little bit of something something. Amen. But those in the house I apologize um, for the inconvenience. But if you got your word in your Bible Amen. You'll be able to follow us. You'll be able to follow me right along because I'm coming right from the Word of God. I promise you. Amen. And so we want to get right in. Amen. We also want to um, we want to celebrate uh, little Grayson. We want to celebrate him because he is walking. Um, he is walking. How old is he? One years old. That brother. He only seems like he's one. But he is walking, and this is the first time I heard him talk in church, so I, I praise God. If he got something to say, he can come up here. But I'm thankful to be able to see, to see him and to know that he's walking. Amen. So, amen. Amen. Hold back the tears, Booker. Hold back. Hold back. Amen. But, amen. To God be the word. But let's get in the word. Amen. Because I don't want to hold you. Amen. Too long tonight. Amen. So we want to go to Matthew. Uh, chapter, let's see where we want to go at. We want to go to Matthew chapter 27. Amen. And we want to go down to that 45th verse. That 45th verse. Amen. 45th verse. Amen. We're going to Matthew chapter 27. I want to war warn you that sometime I will be traveling um, through the word because there's some things that I want to pull out to be able to support what I'm saying tonight and what I'm sharing. 
Amen. I think clarity is important. Amen. That's one of my, uh, one of the things that I am big and a stickler on when I'm preaching that contextually that I am precise. Because when I'm not, I go home and beat myself up because I said I could have been more clear than that. Right, right. So I try to do the best job. I ain't the best at it. I ain't the best at it, but I do the best I can to make sure that I give y'all clarity because that's what I want. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Janice. She prayed for me. I feel you. Thank you, man. <laughs> Amen. But let us go to verse 45. If you please just stand to your feet. Of course, I'm coming from the New Living Translation. Um, if you please just read along. Amen. This is a good word right here. It's a good word. Hallelujah. It says, at noon, uh -huh. darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. About three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, Elima, Elima, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah, one of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. <clears throat> they left the cemetery after Jesus resurrected. That was a sight right there. Seeing folk come from the dead, amen. Went into the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly, <clears throat> truly was the son of God. And many women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Amen. We want to use uh, that scripture to be able to come from the thought, experiencing abandonment on a good Friday. Amen. Experiencing abandonment on a good Friday. Yeah. Amen. I'm about to have fun with this. Just to right. let you know. Amen. But let us pray. God, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to come into the house and to be able to worship and to be able to glorify you and to be excited about what this season is all about. And as we pursue this week, Lord, the meaning of it is, is to reflect upon what was what has taken place over 2,000 years ago. So, God, even as we get in the word, God, Lord, we remember and we reflect. Lord, we grab principles, we grab thoughts that uh, can encourage us and to help us to have clarity in our living, but also clarity of how important it is and how vital it is to worship you. So God, in this moment, Lord, people have come to hear a word from you, so allow me not to be a stumbling block, but Lord, please help me to be the uh, one that will be used by you. So I'm simply asking, Lord, thoughts will be your thoughts that my ways will be your ways, that everything that I do will bring glory to your name. I'm simply asking that you will have your way in this place. Lord, see your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. If you just give God a wave offer right there saying, I surrender to your word that's coming over my life and that my life will never be the same again. Uh, hallelujah. Experiencing abandonment on a good Friday. Uh, one of the things that I'm pretty sure that y'all are very familiar with that on Good Friday, most churches, and we might do this next year, uh, we've done it before, uh, on Good Fridays, they have a seven last sayings of Jesus on the cross services. And it's where you have seven, seven different people that will preach from a scripture or from a saying um, that Jesus uh, uh, spoke while on the cross before his death. Those seven, I just want to share those seven with you just to remind you if you um, can't remember what those are. I don't even know. Um, the first the first last saying was, um, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The second one is, as I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise. You remember those thieves on the cross, right? Uh, the third one was, dear woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. Amen. We remember that with John. John is the disciple that Jesus loved. Um, the fourth saying was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Amen. The fifth one was, I am thirsty. Yeah. Amen. If I was there, I said, I am hungry, but he said he was thirsty. <laughs> Amen. Six was, the sixth saying was, it is finished. The seventh one was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. Those were the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I, you know, I was pondering and I was asking God, you know, God, Lord, I want to uh, come from one of these sayings and I want to be able to expound upon these things. And I want us to be able to connect uh, with one of these sayings, Lord, because all of them are just uh, have so much that could just bless our life. But Lord, I need for you to direct me uh, to where you want me or want us to go. And certainly God answered and he answered with that fourth saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Amen. Now we're going to use that word forsaken, but we're going to use it. Uh, we're going to actually use a synonym um, for forsaken. Uh, when you look, read in the King James, the word forsaken is used. But when you come here into the New Living Translation, you see that the word used is abandoned. Amen. And so we want to use that word abandoned to be able to press forward. Um, we're, th we're talking from the thought of experiencing abandonment on a good Friday. Yes. I want to first establish and make sure that we're all on one accord, that we understand what Good Friday is. Good Friday is not just the day that you get off work, that you can uh, uh, stay home and sleep in. Amen. Amen. Even though we love a good opportunity to stay home and sleep in. Yes. But that is not the pinnacle of the day of Good Friday. Yes. Good Friday is the day in which Jesus died. Yeah. Hallelujah. I tell you yeah. what, it's amazing that we say that's a good day, right? Amen. But that is a good day because without him dying, amen, and, and without him dying, he wouldn't be able to be resurrected and be able to give us remission for our sins. Amen. But I still want to talk about this thing because I'm one of those, when I get the word of God, I connect with it. I, you know, I get close with it because I have to see it. Uh, uh, I have to see it closely. I even try to put myself in the shoes of, of, of the word of God and it kind of helps me get to a place of where I can really ponder and see God um, for some things. And so we're going we're gonna to pull, First Lady, uh, from this word abandon. Yes. This word abandon. Just to make sure that we don't want to court, I wanted to uh, take the liberty of making sure that we all understand and know what the word abandon means. Abandon means cease to support or look after someone or to desert them. Uh, it also says that uh, the definition for abandon is give up completely a course of action, a practice, or a way of thinking. I want to I say that one again. Give up completely. Uh, not halfway, but completely. A course of action, a practice, or a way of thinking. You've got to remember that. Amen for a little bit later. But that's what abandon means. And quite, un quite honestly, I believe that we all understand what abandon means and even what abandonment is. Because when we talk about abandonment, a lot of times in society and life, we see abandonment all over the place. Yeah. I'm telling you, we see parents that abandon children. If you watch the news enough, you will see a lot of times where a lot of parents have abandoned their children. They have abandoned their children to the point in which they throw them in dumpsters. Uh, where they have left them uh, uh, by themselves in places where they couldn't fit for themselves. We see that in the news and the sad situations that we see. Amen. We even see that in the school system where children are abandoned by their parents. I've also seen, I don't know if you've seen this, but I've seen where some people that are married have been abandoned by their spouse. Amen. They've been abandoned by their significant other. Amen. Amen. I've, I've, I've heard where some... <laughs> Some people have experienced where their spouses have left them in the middle of the night and they woke up and they don't even know where they went. They don't know where they at. They don't change the number. They don't even think they, they abandoned them. Amen, baby. Don't abandon me, please. Amen. I need you. I need you. Don't abandon me. Amen. Amen. But truth be told, man, that thing is a real issue. There are real people that experience abandonment in their marriage. There's even people that experience abandonment in their friendship. You know, it's sort of like when people say they're going to be your friend, and then when high water or, or when the fire comes, you're like, where you at? Where you at? Where your shoulder at? My shoulder was there for you. Where my shoulder at? 
I believe that we all got a testimony of one or two of where we had some friends that abandoned us in the time of need. And that ain't no good feeling. It is not a good feeling to invest in someone and invest in something and it doesn't invest back into you. You almost seem useless. Uh, you almost feel like you wasted your time. But the truth is, is that it happens. There's even times that you can be on the job where you feel like you don't have the support that you need to. Huh? There's times that you, I'm sure that you've experienced where you were, felt even abandoned on your job. Yeah. Where you felt like you were doing all that you could to help the job be what it can be, whether to help the company or help wherever you are, be the best that it can be, but still, you've got that abandoned experience. Yeah. Huh? You know, lastly, one of the things I, I, that really, that you know, we can talk about is that when we talk about abandonment, is that some people don't, might not look at it like this, but there are some people that even feel in death that people have abandoned them. That's right. Huh? They died and they left them, and, and sometimes it leaves a, a sore place in, in, inside, and it's like you feel like I've been abandoned. Some people have that person in their life that's like, why did you go? Why did you leave? And you feel abandoned. What I'm trying to convey to you is, is that in many um, situations and encounters in our life, we've all experienced a time or a moment in which we have been abandoned. We have experienced a moment in time where we feel like we have not received or we have not gotten the, the support in which we felt we would do. But I want you to think about how you really felt in that moment. How did you feel in that moment that you know what? What I needed is not there. Amen. Who I needed, they're not there. Huh? I want you to think about this because in the Bible, there was a couple of, a couple of folk in the Bible that I believe experienced abandonment. Yeah. The first person I know is Joseph. Uh -huh. Joseph is the one that he was abandoned by his brothers. He was thrown into a pit. Huh? They, 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 they went back to, the, to his father and, and lied to his father and said that he was dead. But in reality, they abandoned him in a pit. Yeah. I believe that Joseph today will kind of come forth and say, you know, listen, I know a little bit about abandonment. Even Job, if you remember Job, he went through a whole lot of stuff. He lost a lot of stuff. His, yeah. his body, his, 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 the infirmities he's, he experienced. It was so severe, and, and, and the Bible talks about how he had some friends that, 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 that sued him and that was there for him. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they flipped the script. Yeah. So instead of being there to encourage him and to be able to be an uplift to him, yeah. at this moment in time, the Bible says that they start accusing him of doing things that he didn't do. Now, I don't know if you understand or not, but that is a form of abandonment. Yeah. Because when somebody is blaming you for something that you didn't do, and in your mind you say, you know who I am. Right. Right. You know you know my heart. You know my mind. Yeah. You know I ain't do that foolishness. Yeah. Right. You know sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so, they do that foolishness. We won't do that around this corner. We won't do this on this street. Yeah. Huh? But in those moments, you can feel abandoned. Yeah. And you can feel all by yourself. Yeah. I'm simply trying to get you to a place of where I can really move into your heart. And I'm asking you to really visit a place in which you felt like you were abandoned and all by yourself. Yeah. How did that feel? What is your testimony from that moment? What can you pull? What did you learn from that place? Right. What can you what can you reflect on right now and say, listen, I know what you're talking about, preacher. What you're talking about, that's a real place. Yeah. And I don't care if nobody else in here can testify. But I can testify that I've experienced. Yeah. Being abandoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the truth. Yeah. It's just the truth. Yeah. We've all experienced a time, a moment in which we felt like we were abandoned. Yeah. Now this moves me to where we are in the scripture when we're talking about with, with Jesus. Because one thing that you have to understand that with this walking, what, what Jesus went through, that Jesus had feelings. Amen. Sometimes we look at Jesus as just being God, the deity, being God. But one of the things that you have to understand, especially in this part of the scripture, you have to understand that this is where his real humanity came forth. Yeah. Now, I, I know Jesus being nice to those and healing those and, and, and helping set the captain and, and set those free, helping those that were lame. I know we say that, you know, that was that was when Jesus was really showing himself. But y'all, that's what he was showing God. 
Yeah. Because it, it took him to be God in those moments to be able to heal the sick. Yeah. It took him being God to be able to open up the, the eyes of those that were blind. Yeah. It took the power of God for him to be able to perform those miracles. Yeah. But right here we see that Jesus is in a vulnerable position on the cross. Yeah. He is in such a vulnerable position to the Frederick that he literally calls out to God and says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yeah, yeah. Now we have to understand that this is Jesus speaking. So Jesus, if anybody, he had the closest relationship with God than anybody that existed. That's right. But yet still in this moment, the scripture says that he cried out to God and said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yeah. Listen, this also, it reminds me of that Psalm 22. Of where David, he felt the same thing. We know that David is a man after God's own heart. Yeah. But in spite of being a man after God's own heart, the truth is that you can experience abandonment in your life. That's right. Amen. And if we can be truthful, there's sometimes yeah. that you felt like God forgot all about you. Yeah. You felt like God turned his back on you. Yeah. You felt like you needed that healing right now, but God wasn't moving as quick as he as you wanted him to. You, you needed something from the Lord. And it was like, God, what is, are you in concrete? Why you ain't moving fast enough? There are times that we've all experienced, if we can be honest and say that we felt like we were abandoned by God. Woo! If we could talk for real. Woo! If we could talk for real. Somebody say we need to talk for real. There are times ooh, that we can testify that we felt like God didn't love us anymore. Yes, yes. That God didn't even like us anymore. Yes. That God wasn't on our side. Check this out. That God threw us to the wolves. Yes. Because what I needed, it seemed like it wasn't coming. I didn't have it. So, you know, yes. God certainly, he don't care nothing about me. Right. Matter of fact, some folks, if you be honest, some folks actually contemplated giving up on the faith simply because you felt abandoned. That's right. Simply because you felt abandoned. Yes. But Jesus, in this moment, we got to talk about him. And I want to pull some stuff out so that you can see some yeah. stuff. Because right here, Jesus is saying, Lord, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? Where you at? I am on this cross. This mess hurt. It hurts. Where you at? I, it hurts like hell. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Where you at? Woo. Hallelujah, somebody. They don't say, how did they say? Oh, it hurts like hell. Oh, Y'all ain't feeling what I'm saying today. You're not feeling what I'm saying tonight. Because that's an excruciating place. That sometimes that God will put you in a place of pressure. And he won't release it. But he'll say, listen, you got to get through this moment. Jesus himself, he says right here in the scripture that I feel like God forsake me. Yeah. One of the things that you got to see in the scripture and understand is the way that he acknowledged him. Yeah. Now, if we go to the if we go to the God of Gethsemane, uh -huh. and when he was ready to he was ready for him to take that cup from him, mm -hmm. he said, "Abba, Father, yeah. if it's your will. your will." But now he's on the cross and he said, "God, God, do you know what that means? Yeah. That means that in that moment." That Jesus, he had to be all human in that, in that place. Because if he wasn't all human in that place, the sacrifice wouldn't have been anything. Hallelujah. But you should be glad and thankful that Jesus said that I will be human in this place just for the sake of those people that need me. Just for the sake of those people that need healing. Just for the sake of people that need a recognition of their mind. Just for the sake of the people that need somebody to comfort them. Just for the sake of the people, I will put myself in a place of where I could be God, but I'm going to be human. I want to go to verse, I want to go to Hebrews chapter 2. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 2 and I want to read something for you. Something for your hearing because I want you to gather what I'm saying. I'm going to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, and I'm going to read on. It says this, because God's children are human beings, hallelujah, I love the theology, I love it, I love it, 
Hallelujah. If you, I'm telling you what, if you got doxology with no theology, baby, you, you ain't got a leg to stand on. But if you know why, but anyway. Verse 13, 14, it says, but God's children are, are human beings made of flesh and blood. The son also became flesh and blood. But only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who lived there, lived their lives as slaves to the fury of dying. It says in verse 16, we also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. If you don't know who you are, you are a descendant of Abraham. The blessings that are spoken over the descendants of Abraham, you are a recipient of that blessing. But it says in verse 17, Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through the suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Now, I want us, while we're here, just go on over there to chapter 4. Amen? Go on to chapter 4. We're going to get chapter 15. I'm going to go ahead and hit that while I'm there so when I go, I can go. Amen? So, verse 15 says this. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. Huh? Let me, let me read that again. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. For he faced all the same. Somebody say all the same. All the same. Somebody say all the same. All the same. All the same testings we do. Yet he did not see it. See, the thing in which you have to understand with the scripture, first of all, is that he had to become human, correct? And the good thing about him becoming human is, is that he gained an understanding of what it is that we would feel. Amen. I'm glad that I serve a God that can truly say, that, listen, I know how you feel. I understand how you feel. That's why we can't look down on people when they're going through. Because Jesus ain't looking down on them. You know what Jesus is saying? He said, I understand that heartache. I know dude hurt your heart. I, I get it. Huh? I know you feel like you all by yourself. Listen, I get it. The weaknesses that we experience, you didn't experience them first. Jesus did. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? That thing that you're going to listen, cancer is not bigger than Jesus. Disease is not bigger than Jesus. Heartache is not bigger than Jesus. Huh? Whatever that you go through, that is a weakness that is an infirmity. What I come to let you know today is that you serve a God that sent his son to go to the cross that he might feel what you, come on somebody, that mean that depression that wants to cut up in your life, Jesus felt that thing first. Hallelujah. So he understands what you're going through. I remember sometimes that mom would get me and I was feeling a certain type of way and she just, she just cuddled me up. Just made me feel so good and just Mike, it's gonna be okay. I understand it's gonna be okay. And those of you, you know what I'm talking about. She just just brought me, just brought me, just it just felt like I felt so much better. But I'm telling you that I'm in a place now where mama don't got to do that because I understand that Jesus is doing it for her. Jesus is just rocking me and saying, Listen, everything's gonna be alright. I understand the weakness in what you have. I know you feel like nobody cares, but baby, listen, I love you. I'm going to be there for you. I will not leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you to the end of time. Listen, I know they think it's complicated. I know they don't understand your situation. I know they think you crazy. They say, what you feel like that for? Jesus is saying today, listen, I know why you feel like that. I know why you said what you said. I know why you want to do what you did. Because I feel and I've experienced the weakness already. Jesus said, I feel it. I felt it already. I felt it already. I felt it already. I felt it already. You go back to that Matthew. That Matthew 27, you see that Jesus, yeah. hallelujah, Jesus is showing some vulnerability and he's showing some truth right here of saying that I sometimes feel. Well, in this moment, I feel 
like I am abandoned by God. I feel like he doesn't love me. I feel like he's, I, I feel like what's, go, what's, what's the problem, what's the issue? You're God. But the truth is, and the thing that we have to be thankful for is that Jesus was willing to feel abandoned. Because we have to remember that he could have simply changed that situation. But he chose to feel that place. Now if you're wondering why you should be excited on this Good Friday. It's because on that Good Friday he felt something that he didn't have to feel. He did something that he didn't have to do. He went to a depth of humanity in which he didn't have to. But that didn't come on somebody that was out. But because of his good self. Because of his faithfulness. He said, listen, I'm going to do that for Janice. I'm going to do that for Shakima. I'm going to do that for Norwood. I'm going to do that for Mocha. I'm going to do that for Tashina. I'm going to do it because they made me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Check this out, Philippians chapter 2. One of my favorite passages of scripture. Philippians chapter 2, starting at that, that sixth verse. Hallelujah. I'm going to put on, I'm going to start at that verse 5. It says, You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Yes. Now, let me tell you something. This scripture right here put some, it's, it's got some weight to it. You know why it got weight to it? Because there, there is an expectation for you to have the same mind as Christ. Yes. Yes. But. When you think about it, the expectation is not on you uh, to, to have the same mind as Christ just because, but it's because God knows that Jesus understands and Jesus went through and Jesus conquered. And because Jesus conquered, you can conquer the same thing. Amen. Somebody believes that, you know what, I can't think like Christ. I can't have the same mind as Christ. You know, <laughs> I heard somebody say this, it was actually my family. I laughed and choked. I mean, it was true, but it was just still funny. But they said, listen, I, you know, we're supposed to be like Jesus, but I'm not Jesus. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, baby, listen, the Bible says put on the same mind as Christ. So it is that you can be like Jesus. If both be real, it's just you don't want to be like Jesus. Huh? You want to be like Bobo. Huh? You want to be like Shopo. You want to be like that. Somebody said, tell the truth and show you the devil. The reason why you don't want to be like Christ because you want to cuss them out. Come on, somebody. Because you want to handle the situation the way you want to. Meaning that you want your mind to operate. I, I guess I'm the only one that felt like that. But, but, but listen, I can be real right here that sometimes that I want to have my mind on. But I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. Oh. I'm thankful that the Holy Ghost convicts my heart. And in those moments when I want to speak the foreign language to my brother or my sister, the Holy Ghost will help me to be able to put on the same mind as Christ. Jesus said, listen, I've been there, done that. I had Pharisees in my face that was mine. I could have been spit on. They done put corn on thorns on my head. They done beat me. They done did this. So listen, if you can, if I can go through that, certainly you can go through a little bit of that too. Whoa. Somebody say, put on the same mind. Same mind as Christ. Verse 6 says that though he was God. Somebody say he was God. So in the midst of him being on the cross, he never removed himself from being God. But he, let's see what he did. He did not think of it equality or equally with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privilege. Somebody say he gave it up. Once again, he made the choice. It says that he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. Lord Jesus, how many of y'all ready to take your humble position in the kingdom of God? Yeah, that was a question. But anyway, it says the humble position of a slave and, and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in the obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So it shows and we see in the word that it's confirmed that he allowed himself to be lowered. He allowed himself to be human. Yes. And so in that human is what I'm trying to build right here is I'm trying to build a support to understand that you can see clearly that when Jesus was on that cross, it was the human Jesus that was there that was bleeding. Amen. Amen. It had to be 
be a human. The scripture says that it had to be a human's blood, hallelujah, that would take away the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. But it says, it says that, that he said, my God, my God, why are thou forsaken me? I'm going to get to this and I'm going to go and get out your way. Because in this moment, he was experiencing separation, anxiety. Uh, this type of anxiety occurs in the absence of, of an important figure, like a parent, caregiver, or partner. Individuals with separation, anxiety, may seek out constant reassurance. Somebody needed that right there. You're wondering why they keep coming to you. Amen. And why they're always in your vicinity, why they're always in your area, won't give you no space, won't let you breathe, be trying to take all the oxygen you're supposed to be breathing. But it says that a constant reassurance. Hallelujah. You never experienced with somebody constantly, constantly, dead and restricted, constantly. Do you really think I'm pretty? Do you really think I'm my son? Do you, are you really my friend? Uh, 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 you still friends? You know when something happens sometimes, like, hey, I just want to know, you know, I know all that happened, but we're still friends, we're still good. That's that type of person when they have separation anxiety. Huh? Where you have to have that constant reassurance. Amen. Somebody said, build you. You. Somebody said build you. Build you. you want the Lord to build you to a place of where you don't have to have that type of yeah. assurance. Yeah. You know why? Because Jesus should be all the assurance that you need. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Jesus, Jesus. Validate, me. validate me. Now take this out. I went to verse 46. But I want to I want to go back to that verse 45 because I want to give even more clarity of what, what's being said and what's what's being seen right here because at this moment, if I can paint the picture, it is said that Jesus was on the cross for six hours. He was on the cross for six hours. He went on the cross, they put him on the cross at 9 a.m. Okay? At 9 a.m. And so then he came off the cross at what? 3 a.m. 3 p.m. Excuse me, let me get my M's right. At 3 p.m. Now, in the middle of that, in the middle of that, it says in verse 45, at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock, right? This is the place that I really want to drive home and, and go home, okay? Because at this point in time, you've got to understand that Jesus, first of all, he was on the cross for three hours. Yeah. That right there is very uncomfortable. I hope we understand. But then Jesus has it where at noon that it goes dark. Yeah. And it was dark for how many hours? Three hours. So think about this. Jesus is in darkness around him. The darkness, it fell. The darkness is all around. But here's the kicker right here. Darkness was on the inside of him. Because he had, ab he had abandonment issues. Darkness is what we think about emptiness. Huh? Light we think about is fills the room. But darkness is like it takes everything away. There's no substance there or anything like that. So I want you to think about where Jesus, he's on, on the cross, and it goes dark. And he's like, dang, it's dark out, but then it's dark on the inside. Listen, that's the place of where people get depressed. Yeah. Because it feels like you lose feeling and connection with life. Yeah. You feel like you're on an island all by yourself. Right. If you talk to somebody that really dealt with some serious depression, yeah. sometimes people be throwing that word around just too easy. You ain't, it ain't no depression that you got. It's just you just hard headed. But anyway, we're talking about something else. But 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 somebody that really experienced that depression, you it's like a void in your life. And there's nothing that can fill it. Huh? Check this out. There's nothing that can fill that place because that place is dark. It's dark on the outside. It's dark on the inside. You can't see. You're just in a place of where you feel like you can't move forward. You feel paralyzed. You feel like I have no momentum. You feel like, Lord, what, what can I do at this moment, at this point? And all you can do at that point is say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me at this point? That's where Jesus is. But this is what I have to teach you because you got to read the word. Because see, darkness is not a competitor to Jesus. Uh -huh. Darkness is not a competitor to what God can do. Yeah. You can be consumed with darkness. Darkness can be on the inside of you. It can be on the outside of you. But I promise you, Jesus is the answer every time. Yeah. Let me teach this thing. Let me teach this thing. Somebody say, but at noon. At noon, he experienced this. 
Now, I want to go to the very beginning of the Bible. Somebody say teach. Teach. Hallelujah. I want to go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. This is what I said. I promise you I'm not there. Verse 1. I'm going to start there. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness, somebody say darkness. darkness. Darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hoovering over the surface of the waters. Now this is the thing that I want you to catch right here. Because it talks about all of this darkness. But then it says that the Spirit of God is hoovering in that place. Huh? Hoovering in that place. Check this out. The darkness is still there. Somebody said the darkness is still there. The darkness is, the darkness is still there, but also the spirit of God is there. Yeah. See, we have to understand in our life, even in the dark moments, that God's spirit is still there. Yeah. That's the manipulation of the enemy. It, he wants you to think that because you're in a dark place, that the spirit of God is not still hovering over you or not hovering on the inside of you. But can I let somebody know today that in the beginning huh, of the word of God, it lets us know that even in darkness that God is still hovering over in that place. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited because that lets me know that just like Dennis said, that where can I go and hide from the Lord? Everywhere that I go, the Lord is right there with me. Huh? If you in depression, God is right there with you. If you feel abandoned, huh? God is right there with you. If you feel all by yourself, God is right there with you. It don't matter how dark it is. It don't matter if it's morning time. It don't matter if it's midnight. But you show a God that will show up, that will show itself in the midst of darkness. And said that even though it was dark, even though it was dark, God's spirit was in the midst. I'm not going to hurry, but, but it was in the midst. Huh? We got to go somewhere after this. We got to go right here to John. I'll tell you about you, about you, about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I almost forgot where the book was, but I got to go. Thank you, Lord. Give me a light and darkness. Y'all remember that first one now. I'm going back. I'll tell you about to go home right here. Verse 5. First uh, chapter John. First, uh, the first chapter in John. You go to verse 5. This is what it says. It says, the light shines in the darkness. Huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The light shines where? In the darkness. <laughs> thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shines in the darkness. Yeah. In the darkness. Yeah. That means that if you're in darkness, that means that he will get in darkness with you. Come on, somebody. Let this light shine. The light shines in the darkness. And check this out. The darkness can never extinguish it out. It means that no matter where darkness is, where Jesus is, where the light is, it can't compete with what God can do. That's why we have to be encouraged and understand that in the midst of whatever, in the midst of the darkness. God will be our light. What I'm trying to tell you right here is that when you look at the situation with Jesus, the reason why he felt abandoned is because, yes, he was in the dark. But the thing is, is that God could not remove him from the situation because what? If he removed him from the situation, he will remove the light from the situation. So he said, listen, you got to stay in that dark place. He said, God said, listen, I know you think I've abandoned you, but I haven't abandoned you, baby. The thing in which you need is on the inside of you. Because the enemy thought that they were killing Jesus. But what they didn't know is that they were actually planting Jesus in the earth. Because Jesus, hallelujah, was going to be the light of the darkness. He was going to be the light of the world. So I'm telling you right now that even in situations like Jesus where he felt abandoned, where it felt like you just all, all, all surrounded with darkness everywhere, I'm here to let you know that in the midst of that, 
that you have the spirit of God that is in the midst of the light. If, check this out. If you think about scripture, if God would have took Jesus out, he would have took the light out. But I'm telling you that the situation is just like you. Because if you got the Holy Ghost in you, if you got Jesus in you, if you got the anointing in you, you got the light in you. Even on a bad day, you got the light in you. Even when things are going sour, God got something in you that'll make it sweet. Even though you feel like all hell is going to lose, God got something in you that'll make sure the situation will work good. Hallelujah. Because the Apostle Paul said that all things work together for the good of them that are called by God and them that love God. So I come to let you know today that even though you might feel an experience of abandonment, you got to realize that it's still a good day. It's still a good day because in the spirit, you're not being abandoned. In the flesh, you may be abandoned, but in the spirit, you're not being abandoned. Sometimes you don't know that in those moments, you're not being abandoned. You're being planted. You're being pushed. You're being grown. You're being grown. You're being grown. You're being shaped. You're being shifted. You're being made. So Lord, Lord, keep me where I'm at. It might be rough on the outside, but I know there's a light shining on the inside. I know. I know. Experience abandonment. Can I tell you that this is the truth that God wants me to let you know? That even what you feel, even what you feel cannot dictate what the day is going to be. You heard that? You heard that? You heard that? Heard that? You heard that? Even what you feel, somebody say my feelings, don't even matter sometimes. And you may be glad they don't matter sometimes. Because your feelings will tell you something that is not true. Your feelings will lie to you. Your feelings will manipulate you. Your feelings will take you deeper into that dark place. Check this out. Y'all, you want to know something real? That, the, that, that manipulation, it'll make you turn your light off. Why? Because the enemy knows that your light is the thing that's keeping you going. Because the light ain't you, it's the presence of God. It's the presence of God. So even in your feelings, don't let your feelings say that this is not the day that the Lord has made. And that you won't rejoice. We need some folk in the kingdom that say, you know, my feelings say that I just don't feel it today, but I'm not going to listen to it because this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and never beneath. My basket will be filled. My house will be blessed. I will have my mind. I will be all right. Sometimes you want to feel like you're in those abandoned places. Yes. And it's real. Some things that you really go through. And God doesn't say that he doesn't want us to. Uh, he doesn't want us to ignore. He doesn't want us to ignore what it is that he's doing. Yes. He doesn't want us to ignore what we're going through. Because when you acknowledge what you're going through, Listen, that means that your mind's in the right place to remember when God brings you out. Listen, you got to go to the pit so you can have a testimony of God bringing you out. You got to go through some people lying on you 
so that God can validate you in front of everybody. Huh? What did he say here? Do he prepare a table? The presence of your enemies. And this is what you better understand about that table. I used to tell people this all the time. When God said that he's going to prepare the table for you, the presence of your enemies, that doesn't mean that you put a chance for them to sit down. You got to let them know that this is a show that you got to stand up and watch. Because you're not going to sit at the table. Huh? The truth is that there's nothing too great to stand to your feet. There's nothing too great to experience in our life. That we should shift our mind from knowing that God will be God in our life. Sometimes God will give you room and me room for him to work, check this out, and for us to respond. You know what I said? I didn't say work it. I said respond. Because us working it, that's when we mess up. But he wants us to respond. I want to take this lesson right here because this is the last thing I want to say for you. We know what it is to be abandoned, right? We honestly know. Don't let Jesus have that feeling from you. Don't let him experience that feeling from you. There are some people that are so excited to get the blessings of God. But the real zeal should be where you give God the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you can serve God. Where you can give unto God. Yeah, yeah God bless you. Yeah. But give God glory. Yeah. Huh? Because if, if you did something for somebody and they ain't say thank you, truth be told, we don't do it for the praise. But come, somebody say common courtesy. Common courtesy. Common courtesy is to say thank you. Yeah. And if somebody snatch something out my hand and don't say thank you and don't act like I exist and I do it time and time and time again, that humans will go out. But you better be glad that we serve with Jesus now that he can't be human again. <laughs> Because truth be told, there's some times that we treated God like that. When we took the blessing, but we didn't give him the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he ain't that human on us. Why? Because he, he understands the weakness of humans. But he ain't going that place against us, the book. He's going to say, the Bible says that he was promoted. Where he had the name above all names. At his name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. To sit the company encouraged today to let you know that in abandonment in dark places, God can do it for Lazarus, God can do it for you. Huh? God can do it for you. Appreciate this good day. Some folk ain't excited enough for me. I, and I know they ain't excited enough for me, they ain't not excited enough for God. Because this week should be like homecoming. Yeah. We should be turned up. Churches should be filled. Yeah. Filled up. We should take us out. We should have a chair empty in here. Yeah. Because this is the week that we remember what was done for yeah. us. Yeah. I'm sorry. There is nothing more important than giving God the glory. Yeah. Yeah. Folks can't even give him one day. But that won't be me. Yeah. But give God the praise, the glory, and the honor yeah. on a dark day yeah. and on a day that I feel like the sun is shining. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need to pray. We need to pray. First, there's someone that has received Christ and not received him in the 
part of your sins. I invite you to come and to receive this life-changing experience. Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I thought I was living for him. But when I really got into the rice, and when he got into me, I, I realized that I wasn't living. But now, I'm living this life to live again. So if anybody out there, please connect with us. Put in the comments, we'll connect with you as soon as we can. But don't leave this life, don't leave this building not being in the fold. People are leaving, left them right. Whether people want to believe it or not, there is a place of heaven and there's a place called hell. There is a place. So we have to make our choice. It has to be our decision. He don't want to force us into it. He wants us to receive it. He wants us to see how good it is, a, a privilege to be in him and to choose him. Even in being God, he still lets us choose. But let us pray. God, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this experience of tonight. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for your word that is so rich and so true. We ask that you will forgive us, God, Lord, for things that we've done that was not pleasing to your sight. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just continue to breathe on us, God, continue to lift us. Lord, I realize that it's in you I live, move, and have my being. I can't do nothing without you. I have to stay connected with you, Lord. God, I don't want anything to get in the way of my relationship with you. So, God, Lord, I'm asking right now, Lord, that you forgive me, Lord. Lord, if there's anything dark in me that I put in there, God, Lord, I ask that you remove it right now. God, Lord, I ask that you will shift me, Lord. I don't want to think this week being the same mic. But, Lord, I want to leave this week being better, not bitter. Lord, help us in this place to, to relinquish ourselves to you tonight. My sister said earlier that we're to pour, pour ourselves out. And Lord, we're pouring ourselves out. And we're asking you to help us to pour ourselves out. Make sure we get everything out there. So that what you put in will not be contaminated. God, Lord, I speak healing in this place. Lord, heal us, Lord, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. God, Lord, I ask that you will breathe your precious anointing on us, God. Lord, I ask that you will activate gifts, Lord, on the inside of us that we have allowed to lie dormant. Lord, I ask that you will open our eyes to be even more clear to see what it is that we need to see in the spirit. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, just to protect our families. Lord, continue to be with them, Lord. We can't do it, only you can. Lord, we ask that you will continue, Lord, to save those that are not saved. Lord, say, Lord, we still have sinners out here, God, Lord. But, Lord, help us to be able to find them and to love on them and not call out their sin, but to call out the value in them and let them know that Jesus loves them and that we love them too and that there's nothing they can do huh, that will be able to separate them from the love of God. Lord, do a work in us, God. Help us, the body of Christ, to be a better assembly of people. Help us to love people for real and love each other for real. Help us to not to be backbiters. Help us not to judge each other. Help us not to, to be in each other's business. And help us not to say things that we know we don't need to say. And say, oh, Lord, you know my heart. Lord, help us to really understand that we know that you know our, you know our heart. But your question is, do we know your heart? Help us, God. Ship us. Help us not to be negligent in operation, but help us to be effective and use accuracy. Lord, touch us, God, Lord, that we might be able to serve you better, that you'll be able to anoint us. Lord, I ask that you'll do it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, then we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen. Hallelujah. We got a praise right there. We got a praise right there. Amen. We know that on tomorrow we have our Easter egg hunt at 1130. Amen. There is a plan in the rain, so there's still a plan um, for us to go forth. So just still come and see what it is that God has in store. Amen. I encourage those that are helping out that you please, please, please um, be in place. I believe she talked to everybody and let them know what time. If not, just go to her. She'll let you know tonight. Amen. But we um, do want to make sure tomorrow is an awesome evening. I believe we got the power to be able to sell the rain to chill out until we get done. Amen. I believe we can do that. So we'll do that. Amen. I believe that the kids will be able to have a good time. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to be reminded that on Sunday morning at 8 30, we come for morning, uh, morning, uh, Sunday morning glory. We have prayer, 8 30. Amen. So come ready to be able to petition uh, the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. And we have worship at 10. I'm excited about that. Amen. We're going to have some business in the house. So I'm excited. Amen. That they're coming. So make sure that we're in place and make sure that we do what we need to do. Amen. 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 If there's nothing else, we do have something else. Um, Sister Tamika is so awesome. <laughs> so awesome. Um, Amen. That's what I'm talking about right there. But I do want to I want to say this that uh, Sister Mika has been working so hard and diligent on what we have now that we didn't have before. A, a church newsletter. Oh, yeah. Amen. A quarterly news, newsletter. It might turn to monthly. Um, but um, if you would like one, please get with her. She has them. She's ready to give them out. So please, please, please get your newsletter. Um, it might be some folk right now. I just want y'all to give those that's in the house. And then after this, we'll see how the dispense out, and we'll um, share about with the community. Amen? amen. But first, I want us to appreciate. Amen. So um, we thank God for Tamika. And if she, if Tamika asks for information or if she asks for whatever, please be punctual and timely. Because one thing that I love already about her work, she be on it. So. <laughs> I wake up to messages. I like that type of stuff. Amen. amen. She made me feel like I need to get myself right. <laughs> Amen. But she's done a phenomenal job. I've seen it, and she's done a phenomenal job. Me and First Lady have seen it. So please, please, please get you one. Amen. And we'll pass those things out. Amen. 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 There's nothing else. Amen. Awesome job, praise team. Musicians, awesome job. Amen. Let us pray. God, we praise you. God, we honor you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this holy week. We thank you for this good Friday, this day that you have made. And guess what? We're going to rejoice, God. And be glad in it. So God, Lord, we ask that you leave this place and anoint us again. And Lord, we ask that you will anoint our vehicles, our tires, our engines, God. Lord, help us, God, Lord, be able to get to our state places. Lord, safely, God, we ask that when we go home, we find things better. Somebody say better. Yeah. Better than the way that we left them, God. We kind of done it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.